Hi, this is Scott Norman in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University, and we have another video segment on compressors. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about uh, checking the clutch clearance. So, on a normal compressor, you know, this guy right here, the scroll compressor, you know, as far as like checking my clutch clearance, you know, as I'm putting a new clutch on, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, putting a new compressor on, uh, you know, I'm always gonna check it, and you can check this in the car or, or on the bench here, you know. I can put my uh, feeder gauge between the pulley and the hub, you know, make sure the hub spins and make sure that the pulley spins and you move it around and make sure that there's no weird noises and make sure that the hub could spin where you're, you're moving around the pumping, either the scroll or the vein or the pistons, whatever you're moving inside there and the pulley's not making any noises. And so, you know, this is a pretty standard, easy thing to do. Not, well, it's all, sometimes, <laughs> not always. And so this compressor here, which is, happens to be a vein stop compressor, uh, the, um, the hub is recessed in the pulley. And so the key is, is that I, the hub itself, it's, <laughs> I gotta get my feeder gauge down and I can't, I mean, I have to bend my, physically bend my feeder gauge in order to get it down. And I'm not gonna bend my feeder gauge. And even if I had a bent feeder gauge, I physically can't get it inside there. It's not gonna be an accurate reading because it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be wedged in there. So, so really it's impossible, I'm gonna say, and unless I damage my feeder gauge in order to try to get it down inside there. And even if I did try to bend it and get it in there, probably not gonna give me a, an accurate reading. So a better way to do that would be to uh, use a setup that I have right here. So I'm using a dial indicator. Uh, if it's on the vehicle, I simply just jump with the relay and the clutch kicks on, the clutch kicks off. Uh, the um, the uh, the down indicator. I, sometimes I'm on it right to the to the to the hub itself. Uh, there's lots of metal on the engine. It, this is typically easier on the vehicle. Uh, if the compressor's up high, easy to get to. If the compressor's down below, somewhere buried, um, forget it. You're, you, you just you just don't have the room to do that. So then you would do it on the bench before you install it. But bottom line is, on a, on a new compressor or if I'm replacing the clutch, uh, I, I do want to make sure that my clutch clearance is is within spec and so so an easy way to do that and i have it rigged up here and on the bench you know you have to rig it up a little bit different i'm on a wooden bench i got a wooden block here so you know my down indicator maybe move around just a little bit but it gives me a ballpark figure you know you remember uh, a feeder gauge is not you know 100 percent precise there's a little bit of um, wiggle room in there for um for feeling you know, and a little bit of experience. You know, there's an art form to uh, to uh, to use a feeder gauge. A dilator is actually a little bit more accurate. So I'm a, I just hooked up 12 volts and uh, ground to my um, to my uh, compressor here through a jump pack. And if I take a look at that, I can engage it. I can disengage it, and I can see it move. And it's pretty accurate. So I always go, you know, do it more than once. You know, make sure I don't have any slop anywhere at all and make sure it's consistent. And I'm seeing about 10 thousandths. So if I was rebuilding this particular clutch or putting a new clutch on and, um, and I saw this as 10 thousandths, uh, I would, I would want to look up the spec because I think this is a little low. You know, I like to see around 20, you know, maybe 18, maybe 22. But if it's a 10, I'm going to be looking up the spec and say, is it really supposed to be 10 or is my lower limit 15 or 16 or 18 or whatever it is? And if it is low on this particular unit, I would have to take the, um, the bolt off, I would have to take the hub off, and I'd have to put a shim between the input shaft and the hub in order to, to, to shim that compressor out further so I have a higher clutch clearance. So this is just giving you another option uh, in order to check clutch clearance if a feeder gauge will not work. And again, I like this because it's a little bit more accurate. This is Scott Norman. And if you're looking for more automotive educational uh, videos and information, you could uh, look at my Professor Pintain YouTube channel. I'm also on Facebook, and you can take a look at my brand new website. Just look for Professor Pintain. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.